Oval in Dunedin, where the news is much better if you're watching yesterday. Not a ball bowl because of inclement weather. Well, it's dawned a, a lot finer this morning, and prospects are a good deal better for play throughout this, the third day of the first test in the National Bank Series between New Zealand and the West Indies. It's uh, pretty chilly out there, that has to be said. But New Zealand will be resuming at 2.26 for four. Jesse Ryder has already accomplished his half century and Brendan McCullum is with him. And Simon Dool is with me. Yes, afternoon. There's bow afternoon, everyone. In the order of the day for the West Indies. Long sleeve jumpers, I would say, at the moment. Just about every one of them with a long sleeve jumper on and hands in pockets. They've got little hand warmers. They all have those in their pockets at this point in time, I'm sure. And Jesse Ryder and Brendan McCallum just in their shirts. Slightly more used to it. Yes, well, they were well rugged up on day one, that is for sure. And I think it's even cooler here today. Jesse Ryder looks pretty staunch as he comes out on the short sleeve shirt. Brendan McCallum at the other end there with the, the thermal vest. So he will be taking strike, Brendan McCallum, just getting underway in his innings, although he's been batting for over half an hour. Quite restrained, as we know, on uh, day one in support of Ryder. So he's on uh, four. Darren Powell is to complete the over that he started. It's over number 74, so the new ball is just six and a bit overs away. So that'll be the first point of interest, no doubt. I'd imagine, too, that the outfield will be quite slow. And that really has been the hold up today. The moist uh, nature of certain patches on the ground here, but it is good that finally a decision has been made. Jesse Ryder with a very good test average so far and looking very comfortable in this inning so far. Yeah, he certainly is. You just talked about the innings of Brendan McCullum and a very different type of innings. Here we go then, first ball of the day. Wait on. And McCullum plays defensively. Oh, oh yes. He went uh, down underneath that and it stayed down too. And I think they're going to appeal this. They're going to go upstairs to have a look. Hit him pretty low, that's for sure. Now yeah, they're going to ask Rudy Kurtzson about uh, the LBW. Oh, another referral. Chris Gale was quite quick to uh, appeal. First of all, we've got to look at the no ball. The ball is legitimate. We'll roll it through and have a little look. There it actually I'm not sure whether it... Well, it's hit the top flap of Jesse Ryder's pad. What you've got to remember here is that he hasn't played a shot. He has not played a shot at all, so... It looks too high for mine at this point in time, but there's no shot, so it doesn't matter whether it's hit him outside the line or not, providing the ball is going on to hit the stumps. That is the key. So the third umpire has advised Mark Benson that, in his opinion, it wouldn't be out. So now one of those referrals has been lost. They have two remaining now. They started off with three, and of course, if they're successful, they stay with the three. But once you make an unsuccessful appeal to the third umpire, then you lose one. Oh, beautifully played. Wasn't too bad a delivery. And it's a lovely stroke. Down the onside from McCallum for four. And just tried for that in-swing in Yorker. Jerome Taylor, just like the previous ball, but he missed. He missed by about a foot. It's a half volley. McCallum just put it away. Lovely shot. First boundary of his innings for McCallum. Yeah. Lovely shot down the ground by McCallum. And I think it will go all the way. It does. Because he bowls along the wicket is his mode of delivery. 
it means that New Zealand batsmen can more walk into the stroke. They can play the ball slightly on the up. And you can see McCullum was really moving towards this delivery. Slightly on the up, although good extension and got to the pitch of it, more or less. And this is a bowler that they can look to hit through the line just a bit more than the others. In the air, but hit well enough, we'll go for four. Optimistic shouts of catch it. Ah, the frustration of a plan that nearly comes together and in the end costs you four runs. Well, that's crunched away. A typical Jesse Ryder shot. Square of the wicket on the offside to the fence. Another poor delivery. Jesse Ryder's got a great eye. He has got a fantastic eye. It's one of his best assets. He just stands and smashes it square. It's a great collection area for him. It was very wide. New ball or no new ball. Oh, he's got an edge. And he's gone down to the fine leg for four. An inside edge. And it's beaten the keeper. And he's picked up a boundary. This is where I would bowl to Ryder. Forget the bouncers. This is where I would bowl to him. A nice drivable length, but not quite there to drive. So he's driving on the up because the thing about Jesse Ryder and the reason why it doesn't work for him at number three is he's not a big mover of the feet. And right there and then you can see his foot goes about six inches towards the ball, if that. He is not an accentuated front foot mover like Daniel Flynn is, who's better suited to number three. Oh. That's a good one, and McCullum turns and wanders off. He got a nick, and he's caught behind, and the first wicket falls. McCullum goes, 278 for five. A little wide of the crease, and uh, McCullum pushed wide at it too, so it was a good piece of bowling. He forced McCullum wide. It swung in the air, and McCullum uh, just fended a wee bit at it. It was very wide of the stumps, and that's why Brendan McCullum was uh, a little miffed with himself as he left. But good reward for Jerome Taylor. He has been one of the best bowlers for the West, and he's deserved that success. McCullum goes. First wicket of the day. It's 278 for five. New batsman for New Zealand, James Franklin, coming in at number seven in the order. Average of uh, close to 22. Oh, good controlled stroke down the ground from Franklin. It's a lovely shot, just not much more than a forward defensive shot from James Franklin. It just raced away. Edge, goal oh, down. Yeah, Chattagoon, that second slip. He had to go away to his left. But he really should have taken it. Disappointment again for the bowler. That is a slip catch that should have been taken. No foot movement. Just hung there and poked the bat at it. It was comfortable, very comfortable height. Perhaps had the footwork been better from Chattagoon. Oh, now he could be out here. I think he's still on his stumps. Franklin. Flicking one to the leg side will be out at wicket here. Well, he slipped over. He's gone to flick it down the leg side. His feet have gone away from underneath him. Not sure whether the spikes are long enough or not. His just feet have slipped out from underneath him and cannoned into his stumps and knocked the bales off. There he goes. There, he's just slipped and kicked the bales off. Ended up on the ground and gone. It's his front leg. Have a look at this. His front leg as he turns to follow where he's hit the ball. His front leg lands on the side, slides back, and he's out for seven. 289 for six. New Zealand captain Daniel Vittori comes to the wicket at the fall of Franklin's wicket. Starting to push that average out. Oh, beautiful shot. Lovely stroke. On its way to the boundary. It really was not only because uh, of the stroke itself, but because of the conflict.
confidence with which it was played. He's gone through a rough period recently here, Ryder against Edwards. He's been dropped at slip. He's had an inside edge which has gone away for four. Edwards in a good spell and yet he can come right out to that and drive it away. Look at the reach on that, superbly played. Carries him on to 88 now. He's Take got it. On. He's got it. And he's hit it straight to mid wicket. And uh, Jesse Ryder is gone for 89. And New Zealand lose wicket number seven. Don't these Kiwis uh, like hundreds? Daniel Flynn, first of all, going uh, for 95, and now Ryder, who's played so well, pulls it away, hit it pretty well, but hit it straight to the fielder. And uh, the catch taken in there by Chanda Foley. Took a really good one in the first end, uh, held on to that one quite comfortably. So Ryder goes for 89, and New Zealand seven down for 310. New batsman for New Zealand, Kyle Mills. Replacing Jesse Ryder, just dismissed for 89. And Mills uh, with an average 12.85. He's a far better player than that. Really the, the legacy of uh, the rain which we have had here in Dunedin during the week, Monday and Tuesday, a lot of it, and then followed up by rain on Friday, which washed out the entire day's play and left uh, some of the outfield soggy and play was uh, delayed until 2.45. New Zealand... 226 for four overnight, 311 for seven now, having lost three wickets today against some spirited West Indies bowling uh, with McCullum and Franklin going, and then just short of 100, Jesse Ryder. Wickets there to Taylor, Powell, and Edwards. One each today. Powell adding to the first one which he took. Got rid of Howe, and now we're just about ready to resume. Haven't seen any bit of uh, spin at all today. We saw quite a bit of gale on the opening day, but uh, not today. That's for no third man, short and wide. He's very strong in that area, Vittori. West Indies should know it by now. They've played him many, many times and uh, easily put away. No third man. And so is that. Well, he's come out after the tee interval. And he's bowled a couple of bad deliveries, two boundaries in the first over. This is just not what the West Indies wanted. They had a, a little huddle before they came out. What a year! Now he's punched it down the ground. It'll go all the way for four. Well, it's a disappointing start here for the West Indies right after the tea break. They've had a good session before tea. And that's the third boundary that has been hit in an over and a half in the air and into his hands well that's an unfortunate way to go so Vittori goes short of the 3,000 runs Marshall was out there feeling the ball hit straight into his lap he didn't know that Vittori and he went to Mills and said why didn't you tell me why didn't you give me a hand that's a deliberate ploy from the West Indies that Daniel Vittori did not see they put Marshall back on the fence. Mills, is, uh, uh, he's copped a, a bit of a serve, I think, from his skipper, saying, why didn't you let me know that he snuck out there? And the West Indies played that perfectly, and Vittori, it's like playing nearest the pin. He's just won the prize. Look, she says to Mills, right there, look, why didn't you say something? Why didn't you say something? I didn't see it. He's got to go, Daniel Vittori. He was tricked out, and he won't like it. He was deceived by some good tactics. 327 for eight. For it. Are they confident enough? Yes, he'll yes. ask. I would too. They're eight down. They're eight down. I think it's a good time to use a challenge. I'm not sure it's out. 
I think it might have hit the pad, but I, I challenge at this point because they're eight down. You're not losing anything, and it's something working in your favour. Here we go again, Tony. And they've, <laughs> and they've got two more because they've only lost one. OK, ball. Now, was it bad? Was it bad? Well, for me, it's just uh, come off the pad on that angle. Now, we slow it right down and see if it goes past the bat. Well, I don't know. Maybe they might they might be right, the West Indies here. Did it? In effect. Here, yeah, here we go. I think it's hit his leg there, but from that angle. So I wasn't convinced after I saw this angle because... Gee whiz. Rudy Kurtzen has uh, passed his or is passing his information on to the umpire. Not out. So umpire Sahiba will breathe a sigh of relief. Decision upheld. The last one he made and uh, was referred was not upheld. He gave uh, Daniel Flynn out leg before wicket. Or correction the other way around. He gave him not out. And then the review. Thank you, Tony. And look at that. Gillespie. It was wide, it was full, and he just leant on it. The try bowling around the wicket here to Carl Mills. Oh, nicely played. Well, I suspect it was nicely played. Certainly was effective. He's getting the teapot from the bowler, but nobody at third man. Nicely played, and that should go all the way. A loosener from Edwards, and smacked away by Kyle Mills for another boundary. Well, they figured that this might have hit the pad first. Yeah, Chris Gale wants to ask the question. He's got a big smile on his face. Lisbo, if this has hit the pad first, I'd say there's a very, very good shout. A very good shout. It's the uh, determining point. Well, it's legal. That's out. I tell you what. It's hit the pad first, then onto the bat. Let's have a look at where it's pitched. It's hit. Oh, that's pitched just outside. Off. Hitting middle and leg stump, I would say. And that is a very good shout. If is conclusive proof. Ball hits the pad first. This is the one we want to see. Bang, into the pad, then onto the bat. Well, this might help here, the decision to be made. Slow this down. <laughs> Yes, there it is. Into the pad first. That's the conclusive one for mine. This decision might go in the favour of the West Indies, I would say. You can see the dent as the ball cannons into the pad. If Rudy Kurtzen decides that he's at the pad first, I could see another decision go in favour of the West Indies. And there it is. LBW. So Kyle Mills has to go. A judge to LBW the second time in the innings. That one has been referred upstairs and has been against the batsman. And so Mills departs for 12, 347 for nine.
was the attempt at Yorker, and he's good enough to put it away through the onside. Three fifty-four for nine. Four. Clever stuff from Gillespie. Well, it was a slower ball. It was 12, 13k slower than the previous one, but it was a poorly directed one because it was too short. No, and that wasn't too high, and it's going to work for him. But the short bowling has worked, and Edwards is stoked. He's managed to bounce out a number 11 batsman, so well done to him. 365 all out. I don't know what he, you know, Brian's on about there. He stood and looked back at umpire Mark Benson for quite some time. <laughs> Mark Benson was just saying, on your way, son. That's the end of it. Just uh, mosey on on your way. But certainly it's not too high, this. this is actually, it's, it's victory for the bowler, and that's what O'Brien's worried about. It's only hip height, or just above hip height. He just completely lost control, and Edwards took a very simple return catch. So O'Brien loses the battle of wits in the end. But he's done a handy job. He's out for four, and that's the innings all over at 365. New Zealand will be happy-ish to get through to that total. I think at the start of the day, or when play started, they would have had their designs on 400 plus and 400 plus in relatively quick time now Gale is beaten outside the off stump chatter going in the last over to say nervous times for the opening batsman Carmel's bowls that delivery purposely the scrambled seam, it, almost like a genuine off-cutter he tries to bowl. When you watch him normally, he'll hold the ball seam up and try and swing it back into the left-handers and away from the right-handers. And every now and then he bowls one where he just rolls his fingers across the seam. Play going through to 8 o'clock tonight. As uh, this one is away down towards uh, third man. As Gale goes after it. Ross Taylor at first slip. Jamie Howard second. Tim McIntosh at third. Oh, that's beautifully played. Boy, did he generate some power there as he goes onto the back foot and puts it away to the boundary at long off. Lovely stroke. Off the last ball of the over, and it's 21 without loss. So here is the last ball of the day's play. And he doesn't have to play it. So the West Indies have successfully seen off the New Zealand bowlers in a difficult time. And we come to stumps on day three here of the first test match in Dunedin. Earlier today, New Zealand dismissed for 365. And uh, the West Indies at stumps, 39 without loss. So look at the New Zealand batting card, remembering that when they started this morning, or this afternoon it was, 226 for four. And Jesse Ryder was able to get through to 89. Good contributions from McCullum, 25, and the captain, Daniel Vittori, 30. And after 116 overs, New Zealand amassed 365. West Indies bowlers. Powell got three, and so did Edwards, who was probably the pick of the bowlers today. Gave a few, a few runs away, but bowled wicket-taking deliveries. He got three, Powell three, and Gale three. The other one went to...